I fuck with Shawty cause she bout her business, ayy. She independent and she on a mission, ayy. Been through some shit, but now it's better living. What's up, Flavor Squad? It's your girl, Fashion. Each here to give you all the flavor. If you are new here, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe and make sure you comment down below. Hashtag Flavor Squad. If you are not new here, I thank you so much for coming back to my channel. So today I'm bringing you guys my first business, my real business video. And today I'm going to be registering my clothing brand for an LLC. And I just want to show you guys how that process works, what you need to do afterwards, and give you guys some information about what you need to put into your application. Now, I will be doing my LLC for the state of Georgia, and for the most part, the applications are mostly the same for different states, but different states do have different websites, and sometimes they ask for different things. You just wanna be aware of that, but this is for the state of Georgia. I am not um, your professional, so I do advise that even after information I give you to do your own research for your own business as well. So I'm going to screen record on my laptop to show you guys the process of what I'm doing and I'm also going to be talking to you while I'm doing this. So let's head on over to the computer. So first I'm just going to head on over to the website and I'm just going to search up Georgia Secretary of State. And I've already been through this, so some of my links are already purple, but I would just click Georgia Corporate Divisions. And next I'm gonna click on Online Services. So once you're to this window, if you don't have an account, you wanna go ahead and sign up, set that all up by clicking create a user account, but I do have an account. So I'm just gonna put in my information and go on to the next screen. So once you log in, this is the screen that you will see. And literally most of this stuff is self-explanatory. You have the link where you can register a trademark. You have the link for name reservations for things. But the link we're gonna to click today is the link for create or register a business. And it's just asking you, are you creating a domestic business or a foreign business that's not in Georgia? So since I'm in Georgia, I'm going to click domestic business. Business type. Now, there are many different business types as you can see. For me personally, I started off with the sole proprietorship at first in Tennessee. But now that I'm in Georgia and I know kind of where I want to go with my business, I'm going to create an LLC. A lot of people start off creating LLCs and they're not ready for an LLC or the responsibility that comes with an LLC. So you wanna be sure that you are educated on what comes with an LLC before you jump the gun and create yourself an LLC. So now we're gonna click Domestic Limited Liability Company. And next is just asking for your business name. And you make sure you read the notes in the sections because they really help answer some questions because when you create your name, you have to put LLC in that name. So this is gonna be my first name request, but they also give you the opportunity to put a second and third choice because you never know, there may be a reason you cannot use your first choice. So you wanna make sure that you do input names that you really want to use. And if you're not sure about the names, if you're not unsure about if they're used or not, I suggest you go search up business names in, in Georgia first before creating your LLC so that you can make sure you don't have anyone else's name. See, I just kind of changed my mind on what I actually want the name to be. So it's the X. It doesn't really matter, but I changed it. So right now I have the first name I want to request is Dynamic Fashion LLC. And the second name, if that one for some reason can't be chosen, I have Dynamic X Fashion LLC. So now we're gonna move on to the next section. So the next section is an approval document if necessary. And that document is maybe, maybe for instance, you got approval to use a name or something from someone who used to have that name or bank information or something that you might need to upload. For me, I don't have to upload anything, so I'm just gonna keep going and not put anything on that one. Next section is business purpose. Business purpose is literally what is your business? What are you doing? So for me, my business is a clothing brand and I'm doing retail basically, so I'm selling clothes. So I'm just gonna go through here and pick the correct code for me.
now i do want to say that for a clothing brand for retail there are two separate codes now you want to pick one code but then you're going to go over to the sub code and you want to make sure that your business is classified in one of the sub codes and if it is not classified in one of these sub codes you just want to go back to the original code and change that to the 45 because they have two separate retail trade codes so as you can see my business does not fit into the code 45 it fits into code 44 more so that's the code i'm going to choose and you just want to choose what exactly your business is so for me it wouldn't be men's it wouldn't be women's just because i do service both so i would just choose other clothing stores because i'm not necessarily servicing only men and women or only children i could choose family but i'm just gonna click other clothing stores just to be safe and if you're really unsure and you want to do more research i do suggest you do more research so for principal office address you just want to put in the address of your business this address will be presented when people look up your business to look up if you do have an llc or the legitimacy of your business this address will be shown so for me I took the liberty to getting a P.O. box and that's the address that I will be using for my business because right now I don't have a store or anything and you don't want to display your home address online for everyone to see. So I will be putting a P.O. address here. So after my address is inputted, I'm just going to move on to the next section. And in this section, you want to put in your email address for your business. I do recommend a business address, a business email address, not your personal email address, just so different information doesn't get skewed in between those email addresses. Cause I know in my personal email, I get a bunch of stuff and you just don't want to get anything mixed up or lost. Okay, next we're going to create a registered agent. Your registered agent is just the person who's filling this out who's filling this out for you. And if it's you, you are the registered agent. So in my case, I'm filling this out. I don't have a lawyer or anyone else filling this out for me. So I'm gonna put in my information. It asks you if it's an individual or a business, just in case you did have maybe a lawyer or some company, I don't know, filling it out for you. But I'm just gonna do individual because I'm filling it out myself. Okay, the same information goes for the organizer information. You are the organizer unless you have someone else doing it for you. And after you enter that information, you just wanna click add. So my address is displayed right now, so the screen might get a little funky because I'm trying to cover that up. But after that's added, you just wanna go ahead and put in any optional provisions. I don't have any optional provisions, so I'm not gonna worry about that part. And the last part is just your signature. And I'm gonna click this box because I understand everything that it is saying. So I'm gonna click the box. It tells you when this will be effective or you can request an effective date. So for me, I'm just gonna click choose this date and keep going. I'm gonna put my name and put my title and I am the organizer because that's what I put in the information above. And I'm just gonna click continue. And once you continue, it's just going to give you everything you just filled out. You're basically reviewing all of your information. You want to take your time on this part. Don't rush through it because you want to make sure you have all this information correct. This is your LLC. Like this is serious. This isn't something you're just doing for the heck of it. This is your business. So you want to make sure all the information is correct. Anything, a typo or anything, if it's in the name, it's there forever. If it's in your information, that could cause a problem. So you wanna make sure everything is correct here. So once you make sure that everything was correct, you will come to this page. This page is where you actually pay for your LLC. And in the state of Georgia, the price is $100. For the regular process, the price is $100. Unless you want a expedited situation, I don't. You know, I'm gonna wait the regular time. <laughs> and pay the $100. And you wanna pay attention that all of these fees are non-refundable. So if you're using somebody else's name or you're not sure if you're using somebody else's name, you're about to pay $100. So you wanna make sure that nobody else has this name, that you're not wasting your money. I do wanna say while I'm putting this in, um, you wanna make sure that you have a business account to use. I say get your business account before your LLC. It really just depends. No, 
you have to get your business account after your LLC. The only reason I have a business account now is because my business account is registered in Tennessee. So, tennis, so my bank has my Tennessee business information, if that makes sense. So I was able to get a business account. But as soon as you get your LLC or your sole proprietorship, whatever you want your business to be, registered as i do suggest you go ahead and get you a i do suggest you go ahead and get your business account you don't want to mix your personal money with your business money it's just not the best option and that's it once you pay your fee this is the screen you will get and now i just have to wait for them to actually approve this llc which i shouldn't have any problems because no one else has his name or it's not associated with anybody else so i shouldn't have a problem with this so once you get here this is it for this step your next step should be like i said your business account i think your business account should come directly after you can go ahead and go to the irs website to obtain your ein number that's very important you also want to get what's called a DUNS number for your business. And your DUNS number is like a social security number for your business, if that makes sense. So for us, we have a social security number and that bills our credit. So your DUNS number is like your social security number for your business, which builds your business credit. So you want to go ahead and get that. But as far as your LLC, this is it. This is it for the state of Georgia. If you guys would like me to do the state of Tennessee or another state, I'm not going to fully go through the process. <laughs> but if you guys would like for me to show you that process, I can. But that's all I have for you guys. I hope that you guys learned something. I hope that this was helpful to you. I hope that maybe this will help you jumpstart your business a little more. But make sure you are deciding what type of business you want. Do not get an LLC and you are not ready for LLC responsibilities. That's my biggest tip from this video. Make sure you're doing your research and you make the decision for you and not for what everybody else is doing. I know LLC is popular right now, but that's not what everybody needs. Thank y'all so much for tuning in again. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe. Comment down below if you have any questions. But that's all I have for you. So may your curls pop and your grind never stop flavor squad. I'm out of here.